How to Draw Cartoons with John Mark. Hey, it's John Mark, and welcome to my lesson on how to teach you how to draw cartoons. In this episode, we're going to actually go over something a little bit different. We're going to create a tree, and from that, we're going to create some faces, but I'm not going to complete the face on the original drawing. I'll share that moment. So what we're doing first now is just making a basic structure of a tree that I can just use my imagination. So this is a very easy one to do because you can create any type of shape you want as well. And then we're going to finalize with adding some uh, little elements around the tree like the leaves, a couple of flower pots, some leaves and grass. And when we're done with that, that's when we're going to take it to the fun factor and create 10 different faces on top of this tree. So let's just go over some of the sketching techniques first right now. So what you see, I'm just building the area that I'm going to be creating uh, the element for this tree. So I'm looking in the background right now, sketching it out. This is very simple thumbnail sketching. This is not final. This is just to get the idea of the structure that you can change it thereafter all the way to the very end as well. So when we finish with the faces, they're not complete either. They're very much thumbnails so that you can customize them and uh, create some really fun uh, pictures from this. So let's get back to the tree again. And when I'm playing around with this, I'm doing a lot of uh, overlapping action. I'm not ending with a line. I'm kind of giving some dimension. So some roots are behind the tree, some roots are in the front. And now I'm going to create the little angle of the branches. And I'm just going to give them kind of like um, really creative a style, should I say. And then from there, I'm going to add the leaves on the top and the back. So I thought this lesson would be kind of fun playing with uh, something uh, natural. So it's not a right or wrong. So it's much easier to control the art. And then put the faces on, which totally changes the structure of this picture. And you can see how many different faces you can do with just one tree. I could have kept on going and on and on and on. I'm getting a little bit heavier with my lines right now. And this is still considered a thumbnail uh, sketch right now as a comp. I'm just figuring out what to do next. And now I'm going to do a little flower pot on this corner branch here. So what I'm doing here is I'm angling it so it looks like you're not seeing the inside. So it's kind of perspective facing down. I'll have a flower pot on the other side, which angling closer to us. I'm just making a simple little daisy. Let's add another one on the other side over here. There we go. That looks good. Add some leaves. I'm just going to add a little speckle if it was a typical terracotta pot. Now this pot here, let's angle it towards us so we kind of see the inside of the pot. Just that alone can change the whole feature of your picture. One over there is angling one way where you can't see inside, and this one you can. All right, let's create some type of roses on top of this one. All right, there we go. Building it together, and let's get another one on the other side. There we go. Keep a little friend next to a friend flower, okay. Let's put another one in the back. That gives some more depth there, too. It's nice not to keep it always two on two or three on three. Uh, change up so the, the flowers don't look the same from one side to the other. Change the picture. Let's add some grass blades in front and behind uh, the stumps then right now. A little tree there. Okay, there we go. A little one here. A little bit over there. There we go. That's looking good. And then you can get some of the hills in the background. I'm adding a lot more back there too. And the key thing is just use your imagination or if you need to, to get some reference. That's A-OK. -okay. So what I'm doing right now is um, building some rocks and giving some dimension and shadow and how the topography, the ground is actually changing and just giving some shadowing to where might be the actual um, shade. Now let's add another rock behind in the background. That's a little bit better too change it up a little bit. It's always good to uh, have multiple um, visuals to help the depth. So that one was behind. This one's behind. Let's add another one. Little blades here. Yeah. Let's add some more grass blades. All right. I'm just adding some more dimension to the, uh, the, the tree trunk at times, I find. And you know what? Let's add some mushrooms. Okay. 
and they're, they're fun because you can make them very colorful uh, with spots on them. In this case, let's make another one over on the side here. I'm going to show the underneath again. Again, just changing the shape gives a little bit more uh, dynamic to the picture for you. You can have one leaning forward and leaning backwards. In this case, it's like leaning back. And let's add another one just behind this one. To, again, adding some depth. All right. I'm just shadowing it in the background to give him some speed lines. All right, that looks good. Let's add a little small one here, a little fat one over there. That's good. All by itself. Yeah, I could add flowers to the ground, like on the grassy area. Okay, let's just start to work on the tree again. So let's begin with the leaves on the top there. Very simple. You're not going to see the entire tree. This is just going to be some of the leaves in the foreground and some of the tr uh, leaves behind the tree. So it gives it some depth. So we're working the foreground right now. A bit of those trees there. Okay. And there we go. And I just randomly just take these little shape leaves that I have. There's not a typical leaf, but they're just giving you some type of visual as a cartoon. And as you see, the center there, I didn't complete it. That's intentional because as if it was exposed with no leaves in that area. So when you ever get a chance, look at the trees and how they're structured and how the leaves actually uh, look. And that'll help you here. So this, this, these leaves in the back are actually behind the tree. So they're going to be the darker part, the shadowing part I'll add in there. Okay, let's add some speed lines in there right now. To separate so you can see that this is in the background behind the tree that gives that little depth and that area there would be colored in darker too let's get this part here there we go let's finish that little bit in here same thing here you can see the separation now from the different layers all right that's behind even though you don't see any leaves those are the leaves that are behind that tree all right, let's kind of work on the tree, get some more little angular and wood looking feel to it then, the little knobbies to it then. All right, let's work on that one. That one's a little shaded branch in the background. Let's just create like a little dead branch coming out to the edges on the top there. Okay, there we go. Let's create this little end of the tree here. and Now let's just give some little lines across it every now and then to give it like kind of like a neat feature. Now you can see it looks more three-dimensional in that regards. There you go. That looking good. I'm liking what I'm seeing right now. All right. So just about now we're going to get ready to do the faces then. All right. So what I want you to do is not draw on your existing paper, but on another one above it that you can keep on rendering over and over again. So here's the first one. And I create my guidelines for me. I'm gonna make a really angry looking tree face on this one. All right, working on his eyebrows, on his big nose right now. And you can make it kind of like as part of the tree so you don't have to make it look round or smooth. You can, that's perfectly fine. And I'm just making his eyes here right now give him that weatherly look. So as you, you're going to be seeing is you're going to see nine more faces that I create. And what I want you to do is just have fun and use your imagination and do the same thing. So take the original picture of the tree. Don't do the face on it. If you have a copier, that'd be great. Go to the copy machine and make multiple copies. Then from the copies, make all these different faces on there. So you still have the original tree with no face on it so that you can redo it over and over again and practice with faces. All right, there we go, there's his big nose. Okay, let's put something on, on top of his nose, like a little growth, there it is, a little piece of wood popping up. All right, that's looking good. I'm liking that, a little here and there shading. I could see in my head how I would color it in. I probably would tighten the pencils up and then from there I would probably um, color it in with a watercolor technique in, in Photoshop. Let's put a little mouth angry behind this little uh, branch at bark there, that, that root there on the bottom. Yeah, I like that little mouth. Arr. Okay, all right. 
that was one. Now let's try another one right now really quick. Same thing again. I'm just using that same area and on another piece of paper or in my case another layer in Photoshop and let's recreate another face all over again. There you go. I have that crosshair and now I'm going to make it another angry one but I'm going to change as you can see the eyebrows and maybe the expression and maybe I have the mouth higher up this time so it's not behind that bottom uh, root. All right, changing the eyes a little bit. Still making him mad, kind of fun. Yeah, I think he has a resident uh, woodpecker on his back, poking in the back of his neck. That's why he's all upset, the tree. All right, I'm just shading this in for the eyebrow to give some more contrast again, make it easier to distinguish and see the, the visual. Again, these are just thumbnail sketches. These aren't final in any ways, but this gives you a, a decent, decent uh, finishing area that you can come back and do tighter pencils and then color it in if it is for a project or just to have fun. Okay, let's create his mouth wide open and grinding his teeth again. Arr. All right, yeah, let's get that the teeth in there. Okay, let's get that one in there. There we go, put it across the layers and let's shade that, that's the behind, inside his mouth, his gums and the teeth in there. All right, let's get the bottom part of his lip to give some dimension. And when you color this in, you can really uh, give the dimensionals where the highlights are. Let's put that little funny growth on it again, like the last one. All right, so it's basically similar to like the last one that I just did, but his mouth is a little higher up and his eyes are just a little bit different. All right, that's looking good. I like that one. Another fun one. Okay. So let's see, is there anything more that we can change on this one? All right, how about we start our next one right now? All right, so here's another crosshair. So from this crosshair, what I'm gonna do is, let's help me with my eyes when I'm building it again. That's very key because you can see which way it's gonna be angling and looking out right now. So he's going to be more facing towards the right. Let's change the nose a little bit to a little bit smaller instead of so big. Change the eyes, more just natural. Give him big eyes again and looking center, more of a casual look. Friendlier than the, the last two. All right, that's look. shade that, that one in. That one in, yeah, this one's a fun picture too. I like that face. Now, what type of like smile do we want? A very big smile with no, no mouth or no teeth open, just a smile. You can do that, or you can make him sticking out his tongue, or just a little teeth, two, two teeth, like buck teeth coming out. So again, you can use your imagination to really play up with when you're working with this assignment. I really want you to have fun and experiment with a lot of different faces. All right, and, and what's really fun is taking a, a mirror uh, when you're doing this right next to you and make the faces and uh, from their expressions to learn how they may look and then start to draw them up again. There you go. That looks good. I like that one too. The eyes, they're a little cheek higher up the cheek. Yep, those two lines kind of pudgy up like really smiling. I like that. Okay, this make a little bit darker. I'm liking that. All right, so let's work on the next one. This is um, another face. So what's, what, what should we do now? Let's get that crosshair again and see what type of an expression that we can get. Okay, I'm working on the eyes. Let's make one eye kind of small and one really big, as you can see there. So this could be more like a shock on there. And this, and this angle here is more gonna be more three quarter than the last time, which was more straight on. There's the nose. Okay, let's get the mouth really high up there. Okay, all right, let's get that cheek in there and that eyes a little bit there. There we go. I like that one too. Yeah, kind of looking at the nice flowers that are on his root there. He's enjoying the day. Okay, color the eyes in. We're good. I like that. Let's get the little cheek in there. See, that's that the whole point when sketching. I don't mind going over that eye there and coming back. This is a proper way of learning how to draw better by sketching 
and uh, constantly practicing day in, day out. There you go. Let's make some different types of shape eyebrows on the top. All right, color that in. That's looking good. Let's put a bottom lip there so you can really see it's you're looking at a little nostril there and shade part of his, his uh, nose in. Yeah, I like how that one came out too. Looking good. All right, let's let's do another expression. Now, what else can we do? Let's see, let's see. Let's. So I'm gonna be facing forward, straight up. Okay, let's get the eyes. What what do you think I'm gonna be doing right now? What What do you see? I see something with his eyes, the little nose. I got the mouth going now. What do you see? Yep, his eyes are wide and closed, not open at all. And he's laughing really loud right now. So I have him squinting actually, so you don't see any eyeballs. It's just his big mouth open and a little tiny nose. He's just having a great day today. Yeah, there you go. Now we came out good too, I like that one. Mouth and his teeth there, and his upper lip. Let's ch change his nose a little bit. There you go, there was the eyes and the eyebrows. There we go, I'll give that little, like he's laughing really hard. He heard a funny joke. Yeah, I like that one. Shade that in a little bit over there. Good, good, good. Yeah, or maybe he did something to one of his squirrels, changed their, moved their house to their other tree, and they can't find where all their nuts are. You know, squirrels are kind of screwy, kind of funny. All right, I like that. That looking good? All right. So what's the next one do you think we can do? Now let's try to experiment again. Now this time he's going to be looking a little bit more down-ish maybe. Okay, I got his mouth. Obviously you can see that's a smile. So now the smile is going to be really big. The lip behind that branch there. and Some more teeth there. Okay, let's get the eyes. So how should the eyes look then right now? All right. There's the eyes right there. There we go. Is he still laughing? I think so. So here's another laughing one that he has all over again. So instead of straight on, this is like a three quarters. And out of that, you can see the changing of his mouth. It's more uh, three quarters as well. With the other one, we had both on left and right. There we go, shade inside the mouth so you can see where the teeth are. There you go, let's change that line a little bit more. You got that bottom lip there going. There we go. All right, that's looking good. I like that one. There you go, see the eye, the eyelids. All right, I like that one too. Let's get a little high cheek on that one. Yeah, so he's like really pinching. Only on one side right now. All right, so let's do another one. So what do you think we can do now with an expression? We had a couple happy faces, some sad faces, some laughing faces. What about a sad face now? I got his nose. So now the eyes, you just kind of turn downwards. He's really sad. Springtime's over, summertime's coming up, he's going to get really hot. Or is it fall time? He's going to lose all his hair, well, his leaves. He's all upset. He's going to be bald for a couple months with no leaves. And all the birds are going to be flying away. You can't be hearing them singing their songs. All right, so here we have the eyelids on top there and the eyebrows above that. And we're just going to make them really, really sad looking. Very simple. There's his nose. All right. That's good. All right. Got another one done. Now, what can we do with another shape now? Let's see, let's see. I know we can do something interesting. Let's see, hmm, let's do it on this side here now. Let's change the direction instead of facing right. Let's do one to the left now. All right, so here's the nose going the other direction. I kind of give them bubbly, bumpy look because again, this is on the tree. All right, so, ooh, now what is this look? What do you think it might be looking like? More serious, hmm. He just heard somebody was going to be moving in next door. And he's just checking out what type of tree is coming in there. Is it a pine tree? He's hoping it's another walnut tree. So he's just a little discerned. 
So again, so you have one eye really with a straight brow. That's the one on the right. And the one on the left is kind of curved more to give that like, hmm, what's going on? Looking over there. And then from that, he can have him smile, blink, or whatever if you want to animate him. Let's just color his nose in a little shading right there to give some dimension. Makes it easier to, again, as always, to see the shape that you're pulling through for coloring. Let's put that bottom lip underneath there. Arr. Again, hmm, what's going on? Not so sure. All right, that's looking good. So let's see, what can we do with another face? Another one, another one, let's see. Okay, I got another idea. Let's try this one. All right, so right in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna get the eye and the nose right there. There we go. Let's get that eye there. Here we go. Change it in like really small in the middle now. Really small eyebrow, so he's all nervous. Far in the distance, he sees a whole bunch of uh, termites coming towards him, and he can't do anything about it. He's just sitting there and watching them coming closer and closer. As you know, trees don't like termites. Let's get the eyebrow on the top there. there. I like that one. All right. Get that lid there, maybe kind of like a little of the eye lid, a little bit closing, a little bigger. Okay, let's make this one a little bigger too. And these are just to give you some ideas of exactly how to draw different faces with one tree, one visual background, and you can do many same faces. Again, that all you need to do is take a copy of the background and have it blank now and not can start another one. So what do you think we can do right now? All right, I lost count on how many faces, but totally we will have 10 different ones. Let's put the nose in the middle again. Let's see what how we're going to make the eye this time. Let's make it tall here and and let's see how this one's going to fall. Almost equal. Yeah, let's make it pretty much equal. Maybe the right side just a little bit bigger than the uh, the left side. Again, both centered. Let's try to do that scared look again. Yeah, I think that'll be a good one. All right, let's get an eyebrow there. In this case, instead of the eyebrow turned the other way, it's sagging in a little different. So the other one with the eyebrows, I had the opposite direction. So he can still be scared. Give him that really fun mouth style, like a little wiggly all the way around up down let's get that up there all right okay that's looking good i'm really enjoying that one and there's this nose coming back again get the eyes and i'm not so sure which out of all these faces i would do but i can tell you this much i probably would just airbrush a color or watercolor the tree background by itself then i can have multiple faces on top and here's all 10 again so I hope you enjoy this video as always. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. Our website, jmg-studio.biz. If you like this lesson, you'll find others like this on our site. We even have a store that has our drawing books and many other goodies. Thanks for the support.